You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. What's up guys? So I'm actually a day late and a dollar short on discussing this topic, but I felt compelled to address it anyway. Uh, I am going to be discussing a couple of gaming news articles that are going around that basically say that Fallout 4 is Bethesda Game Studios' most successful game since their inception. So what happened is Pete Hines did an interview on a podcast for Kinda Funny Games, which is a channel here on YouTube, and I'll provide a link to the specific podcast in the description if you're interested. Uh, now, some of you probably already know this, but Pete Hines is the vice president of both marketing and PR are at Bethesda. So he's basically the guy that's responsible for a lot of the marketing decisions, and he's also presumably Bethesda's lead PR person. Now, several of these internet articles have latched on two different quotes from the interview that I would like to discuss in detail, and when asked about Fallout 4, Pete Hines says the following, and I quote, Fallout 4 has got to be the most successful game we've ever launched in our company's history more than Skyrim in terms of what we did. Now, at first glance, this quote is fairly vague, but it's later confirmed in a Twitter post that what Pete Hines was getting at was that Fallout 4 was the most profitable game that Bethesda Game Studios has ever developed. The other quote that was mentioned in these articles apparently has to do with the player's reception to Fallout 4 and how a fair number of players felt it was too similar to Fallout 3. I say apparently because I haven't watched all two hours of this podcast, and all the different articles I checked seem to have a different consensus as to what Pete Hines was getting at. Um, from what I can tell, Pete Hines compares the experience someone had if Fallout 4 was their first game versus someone that has played Fallout 3, New Vegas, or even the two original games first. And he compares it to Uncharted 4, and he says the following. If you played Uncharted 4 and that was your first game, I think you have a very different reaction to what that game is than if, like me, you played 1, 2, and 3. Because Uncharted 4 is more of 1, 2, and 3. Now, I'd like to go ahead and address each quote here and talk about it more in depth, and also discuss some other concerns I have going forward with both Fallout and even the Elder Scrolls games, but let me start off with Fallout 4 being Bethesda's most successful game. A fair number of these articles specifically mention that Skyrim has sold 20 million copies since launch, while Fallout 4 shipped 12 million units since launch. Now, if you check out these sales statistics on VG charts, you can somewhat verify sales figures for both games, and I say somewhat because VG charts supposedly doesn't include digital sales for games and only includes physical sales, so the PC sales are going to be skewed somewhat. But I digress. Skyrim was originally released on 360, PS3, and PC in 2011, and last year it was released on PS4 and Xbox One in the form of Skyrim Special Edition. If you add up the total sales for Skyrim, you'll find that Skyrim has actually sold about 22.79 million copies since it was launched in November 2011. As for Fallout 4, according to VG Charts, Fallout 4 has sold 13.28 million copies since it was launched in November 2015. So if you figure that Skyrim has been out for at least 5 years, and Fallout 4 has been out for at least 1, Fallout 4 sold way more copies in its first year than Skyrim has on a yearly average. Now I did some more digging numbers wise, and it appears that in the first year of Skyrim being out, it sold about 9.4 million copies. In Fallout 4's first year, it sold about 10 million copies, so in terms of launch sales, it stands to reason that Fallout 4 would have been more profitable since they sold about 600,000 more copies at launch. Plus, when you add in the price of the season pass for Fallout 4 and its inevitable price hike, it sort of makes sense that Fallout 4 was more profitable than Skyrim was. What is interesting to mention is the sales percentage drop-off for the next year for both games. While Fallout 4 certainly sold more initially, it has about 10% lower sales the following year than Skyrim did. While PC sales drop-offs remain consistent at about 47.9% for both games, PS3 and Xbox 360 versions of Skyrim had drop-offs of 49.2 and 60.4% respectively. As for Fallout 4, the Xbox One has a 69.7% sales drop-off, while the PS4 had a 71.3% sales drop-off. 
And based off of hard averages, Skyrim sold 52.5% less copies the second year, while Fallout 4 sold 62.9% less copies the second year. Now keep in mind that these are just averages, but that should bring us to about 4.5 million copies of Skyrim sold in 2012, with about 3.71 million copies of Fallout 4 sold in 2016. So over time, Skyrim actually sold more copies in 2011 and 2012 than Fallout 4 sold in 2015 and 2016. Granted, the difference here isn't that dramatic, but I do predict Fallout 4 will sell less copies than Skyrim did in its third year. Then again, Fallout 4 VR is supposed to come out this year, and it may end up significantly boosting sales of Fallout 4 further. So it's really too early to tell right now. Something that is worth mentioning is that Fallout 4 is significantly more streamlined than earlier Bethesda games. It's possible the amount of money it cost to make Fallout 4 was actually lower than what it cost to make Skyrim. And if that's the case, then I think it's safe to say that Fallout 4 was more profitable but only Bethesda would know that. Even still, Fallout 4 is outselling previous games in the franchise. Fallout 3 has sold about 10 million units since launch, while Fallout New Vegas sold about 8 million units since launch. And given that Fallout 3 is almost 9 and New Vegas is almost 7 years old, I would say Fallout 4 is still a major success. As for Pete Hines' quote on Fallout 3 versus Fallout 4 and how he compares it to Uncharted, that is an interesting way to think about it. Um, it stands to reason that Fallout 4 may have been many players' very first Fallout game, and I'd say that was definitely the case with Fallout 3 about nine years ago. Fallout 3 substantially outsold previous Fallout games before it and thus greatly expanded the initial audience. Now, I know some people got started with Fallout 1 and 2, but I think it's very likely that much of the current fan base got their start with Fallout 3. Especially when you consider Fallout 3 has sold 10 million units, where Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics haven't sold anywhere near that number. You also have to consider that many fans of The Elder Scrolls Skyrim also bought Fallout 4, and there's a strong possibility that there are a fair number of people where Skyrim was their very first Bethesda Game Studios game. Keep in mind too that while Fallout 3 and New Vegas sold well at the time, they weren't quite the cultural phenomenon that Skyrim was. I'm not really too concerned that Fallout 4 is similar to Fallout 3. After all, it is a sequel in a franchise, and you do have to have a certain amount of consistency from game to game. Otherwise, it's not really Fallout. Really, I don't have any issues with the second quote, as it makes a lot of sense to me. That said, I still want to talk a little bit more about that first quote, where Bethesda said that Fallout 4 was their most successful game ever. Um, one of my concerns with Bethesda when it comes to the Fallout franchise, and probably even Elder Scrolls 2, is that they aren't blinded by the success that they achieved with Fallout 4. Generally, companies that are successful become somewhat blinded to the criticisms of their games. On the one hand, you could argue this is justified if your newest installment sells better than your previous installment, and because you're selling more copies, you're going to assume that you're doing the right things for your game, and that you don't need to do anything else to improve your games. At the same time, there are a lot of really good criticisms of Fallout 4, and not just pertaining to either the lore or the dialogue systems. I think a major criticism that I haven't really brought up much in previous videos was how Bethesda decided to handle the season pass and all of the DLC. The first problem with the season pass was the price increase from $30 to $50, and I think this pissed off a fair number of people at the time, and while you did allow us to buy it for $30 before the price increased, I think you would have been better off in the long run to not have increased the price at all. You also consider that if you bought in at $30, you had no idea that you were going to get three settlement system DLCs. Maybe it was just me, but I thought we would get at least four campaign DLCs for $50, when what we actually got was six DLCs that really could have been sold to us for about $30, but got marked up to $50 after the fact. Now, I don't know if Bethesda Game Studios made this call, or Zenimax Media made that call, but I do know that a lot of people really got burned on Fallout 4 Season Pass, and I think a lot more people are going to be more wary about buying Season Passes for future Fallout and Elder Scrolls games. I understand that companies want to make money, but I think these kinds of tactics are going to piss people off in the long run.
In the future, unless you expressly state what is going to be in the season pass, I think consumers are going to be hesitant to purchase it, especially since they got burned with Fallout 4 season pass. So just tell us what's going to be in the season pass in the future, set a fixed price that doesn't increase, and that way we know exactly what we're getting. Another criticism of Fallout 4 is its engine. As I understand it, Bethesda is still using the same engine that was developed for Oblivion more than 10 years ago. And while it's probably cheaper to just modify your existing engine, I think Bethesda's games would be improved as they would be able to create a lot more stuff in a newer engine that they've made themselves. I don't know what Bethesda's plans are for Fallout 4 VR, but the fact is that Fallout 4 and games made in the creation engine become unstable when frame rates exceed 60 frames per second. This becomes very noticeable when performing certain actions like lockpicking. Even navigating some of the in-game menus proves to be difficult as you scroll through the options menu way too quickly at an uncapped frame rate. And I don't think Bethesda needs to reinvent the wheel here or anything, but I think they do need to focus on making their engine much more efficient with modern hardware. This isn't to say that Fallout 4 didn't make any good improvements. In particular, Fallout 4's lighting is excellent and it's amazing that Bethesda could pull that off in a relatively old engine. But still, it's time for a new engine. Even if VR doesn't take off, having a game engine that support things like uh, HDR, 4K, and also allows for full-scale battles with hundreds of NPCs on the screen would really improve the experience. There's also the high-resolution texture pack. While it was awesome that Bethesda added better textures to the game, and it's even better that they did this for free, the big problem is that the install size for the textures is twice the size of the base game. Why are the textures 58 gigabytes when I can download texture mods like Vivid Fallout that greatly improve the overall look of the game while also improving performance? What's a shame is that based on some of the testing that I did in one of my previous videos, the high resolution texture pack does seem to add a fair amount of detail and clarity. It's just I don't understand why there couldn't have been an option for more optimized textures, especially since the percentage of the PC gaming community that owns a GTX 1080 is fairly low. I guess what I'm getting at is, while I'm grateful that Bethesda made a high resolution texture pack, it's a shame that they didn't optimize anything for lower end systems. My only other concern is the oversimplification of certain mechanics and some retcons to the previously established lore for the franchise. I will admit that I like how Bethesda removed weapon and armor durability. However, it's lame that because almost every weapon is modular, each individual weapon is less unique overall. Guns from New Vegas like the AER-14, the Q35 Matter Modulator, and the Maria 9mm pistol were cool because they had different attributes from similar weapons, and they also looked a little bit different. In Fallout 4, a unique weapon is usually defined by no more than a legendary weapon effect on a regular gun. And there's also less variation in ammo types. In New Vegas, you had hollow point and armor piercing ammo in addition to your regular standard ammo for each weapon. It's a shame that this didn't return in Fallout 4, and I guess it did in a way in the sense that if your gun fires incendiary bullets, but that's only because it has the incendiary legendary weapon effect. What I think would have been better was to have actual incendiary bullets that you would load your gun with, similar to what we saw in New Vegas. I also think Bethesda needs to exercise more care as far as the lore is concerned as well, especially in the case of the X-1 power armor at Nuka World. And while I get that it makes sense from a gameplay perspective to have that power armor suit there, it contradicts the lore established within Fallout 4's loading screens as well as previous games in the franchise. Now I get that Fallout is Bethesda's IP and they can do as they wish, but the goal should be to maintain some consistency between current as well as previous entries in the franchise. My fear is that if a lot of these retcons and other changes to the lore get to more severe points, we're going to get to a point where Fallout may not even really be Fallout anymore. So as I've said previously, I hope Bethesda doesn't become blinded by the success that they've had with previous games and Fallout 4. Now, while I've been fairly critical of Fallout 4 in this video, please understand that it's because I really enjoy the game and I would like to see Bethesda improve on certain things. Something that I think they do really well is mod support. 
No other major AAA developer really seems to be quite as committed to having good mod support as much as Bethesda Game Studios does. At the end of the day, I think Bethesda is listening to at least some of our criticisms, especially since Todd Howard has acknowledged some of the issues with the Fallout 4's dialogue system in the past. It's just that I hope they consider some of the criticisms with the Season Pass, Fallout 4's engine, and even other things like how the texture pack turned out. Even still, I really had a lot of fun with Fallout 4, and it was a heck of a lot of fun to play. I'm looking forward to both future Fallout and even future Elder Scrolls games as well. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, and as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.